God, so glad you're with us. This is our second installment as we prophesy into the year 2023 for your hearing and your preparation. Now, I'm Frank Mickens, and I'm so glad that you're trusting the Lord in this ministry, Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. And we're going to dig right in. Last time we talked about how the Lord wants us to be prepared for false prophecy being propagated in the media. And today we're going to talk about the coming youth revival glory to god i believe the seeds of that revival already been sown and i believe we're going to see even more manifestations of it in 2023 so let us pray god we thank you for our children we thank you for the inheritance the heritage of the lord that are our children you say that we should aim them like arrows god and our quiver should be full of them i pray in the name of jesus that we as parents and those as mentors will guide our spiritual and natural children god so that they might fully manifest the heart of the Lord that you've given them as individuals, preparing them and useful uh, to be useful for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now at this time, I pray that I submit now my entire being to you, my mouth and my mind, even my ears and my sight, God, to be useful for the, uh, for the prophesying of your word and preparation of your people. Bless every son and daughter now by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that our hearts are prepared to hear this. I know there are so many of us that have, are excited to hear about what God is going to do with the youth because we look around and we see all these things that they're being inundated with in perversion and sexual immorality and issues of identity. We know they're struggling with uh, mental health and depression. We know they're struggling with vaping and drug abuse and drug use. We know they're, they're really being inundated with suicidal thoughts. We're seeing suicide increase. God, we ask and pray for your kingdom to come and your will to be done in our young people. So let me prophesy into your hearing today because there are so many mothers and fathers. You're on here right now looking for hope. You're looking for that which you cannot see. The Bible says hope that is seen is not hope at all. And so we have hope in that which we have not yet seen. And we know the Lord's heart for his young people. He says, let the children come to me and do not forbid them. He was, he was uh, going, uh, uh, he was lambasting his disciples who were saying, no, 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 Jesus doesn't want to see the children. No, Jesus wants to lay hands on them as he was in that passage in the scriptures. And so we praise God for our young people and what he's doing in them, even when it looks like he's not doing anything at all. I want to prophesy to somebody. You might think that your child or grandchild or, or niece or nephew or your adopted child is not hearing the word of the Lord. No, they are hearing and they are wrestling and the spirit of the Lord is going to moisturize that word so that it not only gets into the dirt, but it breaks the ground that the, the power of the seed opens up inside of them and begins to break the ground. I see it in the spirit. We're going to see their soul set on fire for the Lord. And that's what this dream I'm going to share with you is all about. Uh, I'm going to read before I go into the dream, Joel 2 in a portion of it. And we're going to read a little bit more or read it again after this dream. But listen to this. Fear not, O land, Joel 2, 21. Be glad and rejoice. This is, a, this is to you. Fear not. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. And then it says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will what? Cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Glory to God. And then we're going to go to uh, Joel 2, 28. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And it says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. This is the word and the zeal of the Lord of hosts. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform his word. Glory to God. And so we just heard the heart of the Lord that he says the, the young men will see visions that sons and daughters will prophesy. We're going to see spiritual awakening in the youth. Glory to God. The ground is being set for this. Why? Because they want off. Authenticity. They want things that are real. They don't want fake stuff. And so when they know God is real, they're going to take off. 
hear me today. They're going to take off. How do I know? This is what the Lord showed me. So I was watching a football game in this dream. And the Lord was showing me something prophetically about the harvest field. So the football field represented the harvest field, okay, or even the land in general. And there was a game being played. It was the Alabama Crimson Tide. They were playing another team. And the Alabama Crimson Tide represents the people of God. And I'm not saying I'm an Alabama fan. And listen, if you're not an Alabama fan, just put your uh, personal preferences to the side because Crimson Tide represents what? The blood of the Lamb of God on the people or the players. They were representing the crimson blood of Jesus Christ. And so they're playing their opponent and they were in the lead by a small margin. And I knew that the stakes were high and that they needed to keep their lead and build their lead. What are we talking about? The advancement of the kingdom of God by the crimson tide. Glory to the Lord. But in this time where the game was at stake and there was a slim margin, in came a skinny little player. And he was wearing the number six. We know that in the scriptures, in Revelation, it says the number six is the number of man. It talks about the power and the effort of mankind. And so this player is bringing his, his natural to the supernatural of God. And he's putting himself on the field. His number was called and he represented a generation. He represented a younger generation because what was he? He was a freshman on the team. Come on, I'm excited. And he had been called upon throughout the game to make plays. He wasn't a starting player, hear this today, but he had been called by his coach several times to come in and do a variety of things throughout the game. That's the heart of the Lord for the younger generation. They're not called to do all of it. They're not called to be the starting players. They're called to come in and add an ingredient that only they can bring. And here's the ingredient I'm going to show you. This young man wearing the number six, this freshman, made several big plays that helped the team maintain their lead. He was playing on offense, glory, and he was playing on defense, praise the Lord. He was in prayer on offense and defense. And listen, in the dream, not only did I see him playing for the Crimson Tide, representing the redeeming blood, the crimson blood of Jesus, he also was playing for the USC Trojans, glory to God, which are warriors, but where do they play? Los Angeles, the city of angels, glory to God. So this was, again, a player who was on the team of God. He's on the field, and I wrote this down. He is a special player. He reminds me of David, young, skinny, full of humility and a righteous heart, devotion, loyalty, faith and fearless. I saw him return a punt and he was so fast he was making a big play again and again to advance the team up the field, the harvest field. And as soon, listen to this, as soon as the game was over or the play, the game wasn't yet over, but as soon as that play was over, he was exhausted and just fell on his face on the sidelines. And a few of his teammates lifted him up and carried him. And he was wearing his USC jersey, red, glory to God, and white, the purity of the spirit and the red of the blood of the lamb. And he had golden pants, which represents the kingdom. He's a member of the kingdom of God. And they, his teammates took him to the stands and all of a sudden he was wearing a Penn State jersey, the Nittany Lions. What is it? The Lion of the tribe of Judah, Judah wearing navy blue now, a deep walk in the spirit, a deep walk in the spirit of God. And he's still wearing the number six. And now he was no longer Caucasian. He was African-American. So now we're seeing the diversity of this younger generation. And he was suddenly refreshed and he stood up in the stands and smiled and started beaming. And this young man's transition, I believe, represents the attributes of the coming youth emergence. They will have a heart of a lion. They will be warriors. They will be part of a crimson tide. What? A wave of the spirit of God, of the red crimson blood of the Lord, touching, moving, transforming, renewing young people in America. Can I get somebody to say amen? Can I get a hallelujah for the younger generation? Glory to the Lord. And I kept hearing when I saw him exhausted that he left it all on the field. They're going to bring such a youthful exuberance and a passion. They're going to pour out their lives for God. It will be a wave of redemption, the coming revival and awakening. They will play a big part in it. Younger people of more than one, they will be, a, they will be team players with a heart for the Lord. And I kept hearing after God's own heart, they will be as David. As the Lord spoke to the prophet Samuel, that he had prepared someone after his own heart, after Saul, 
who had been initially anointed to be the king needed to be replaced because he had wicked, perverse desires to please people and please himself. And the Lord needed to call up a, a younger generation, someone that other people were not thinking of. His name was David. He was in the sheepfold. His father didn't even think of him when the, the prophet came saying, bring all of your sons. He left him in the field. He said, certainly it couldn't be him, the youngest, the readiest, the one that nobody pays attention to. He's off singing songs to somebody we don't even understand. And the spirit of the Lord is saying, it's gonna be those after God's own heart with the spirit of David, the heart of David, they will come forth. And in this dream, I was smiling because I saw that these young men are precious. And it's going to be young women as, as well, young ladies as well. They are precious, so beautiful, because they are so humble and willing to stay. Even one battle, one play, they put out everything they have in their body, heart, and soul. They gave their beautiful heart to, to Jesus. They love him and they love his family, their family. We can't see them now. They're being prepared with authentic worship and relationship with the Father. We need to pray for them. They will be tenderhearted because they will know the Lord so well, but they will be like Trojan warriors and it will seem like here on the battlefield, just like David, they'll do anything just to advance the kingdom of God an inch on the battlefield, the harvest field. They will not fear the enemy and they'll be team players obeying orders from their coach, the Holy Spirit. The deep navy blue jerseys indicate the deep relationship with Holy Spirit. The beaming smile represents the joy of the Lord that they will have in his presence. And the score that I saw showed the Crimson Tide winning, get this, 11 to five. 11 represents transition. It's a step away from kingdom government, which is represented by the number 12. So these players will arise at a time of great transition, great warfare, but right before a great outbreak of God's spirit in the earth. I believe this youth movement will immediately precede a great awakening in the culture of this world. They will play a large part in bringing people to the Lord. And five, grace. There will be great grace and favor accompanying this movement. Despite any setbacks, there will be a grace to conquer territory back from the enemy. Where the enemy has advanced into the culture, these young men, these young people, these Daniels will arrive to help take the kingdom forward. The enemy had just made a safety in this game, scoring two points, which brought their score from three to five but it was still a prophetic sign to the church that they had the grace to win. Every move of the enemy is still playing into the hands of the Lord. I wanna prophesy into the heart of people who are seeing young people and they're discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Every move of the enemy, the Lord spoke this into, into my spirit, every move of the enemy is still playing into the hands of the Lord. Glory to God. The enemy might tackle us in our own end zone. That's what a safety is. They might even get into our territory, but they cannot win. And remember, this was a freshman, fresh man, new players, new energy, fresh passion, fresh vision, fresh uh, takes on ministry. These young people will come from all over the country, as we saw evidenced by the teams, USC, the Nittany Lions of Penn State, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. They will come from all over the nation, north, south, east, and west, Pennsylvania's north and east. Alabama represents the South, California, USC represents the West. Let us go back to the word where it says in Joel 2, 28, and it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our young people right now, what we can't see. God, we trust you for what you're doing in their lives and in their hearts, and we pray into it, God. I pray you arrest their attention by the goodness of your love. God, I pray your buttery love smears on them with your anointing on top of their gifts and their talents, and that they awaken to their calling to live out their lives satisfied in you. We pray this, Lord, for every child of every stripe and background. Glory to God. Race does not matter. Race is not even in the kingdom. And so we don't even pay attention to race. It is not in your kingdom. It is not valuable to you. You look at the people and their background. 
the nation they represent, the territory they represent, the bloodline they represent, and they will represent your bloodline, God. I pray that the blood of Jesus will supersede every bloodline in the natural and that they will take on your DNA and pour out their lives like David. They won't be perfect. They'll make mistakes. But God, even as they're running from the enemy, who's trying to steal them out of your clutches, like Saul tried to steal David's anointing and steal David's position, I pray that you keep them in perfect peace and that you keep your intercessors praying for them. God, what you have begun in them, you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You are faithful when we are faithless. You cannot deny who you are, and every word you've spoken over them shall accomplish what you sent it to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. Listen, I'm so, I'm so excited about 2023 and what God is doing. This is our second installment. We're coming back next time to talk about famine and the economic downturn. That'll be uh, the first of two parts where we're talking about famine. We'll talk about the economic downturn, and then we'll talk about drought and what that represents in the spirit. The drought is already just going crazy and the economic downturn is about to uh, really pop off. In the meantime, we'd love for you to check us out on our website, faithfireworldwide.com. We are in the midst of a $20,000 campaign to fund our international mission work and to care for our ministry here at home where we're doing community outreaches. We're bringing together people to worship in unity. We're also uh, helping the poor, glory to God. And we'll be going to Central and South America. We'll be going to Kalifi, Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, and Uganda as well in February, where we're gonna be participating in prophetic ministry, teaching and preaching to seminary students and pastors and members of churches that have been planted there. And then later in the year, we'll be going on crusades uh, with a, a, a brother of mine, Steve Fado, out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And we're going to see tens of thousands of people saved, healed, and delivered at these massive crusades. And so we pray that you will consider giving into this ministry, as well as the prophetic ministry that we will continue to proclaim and to propagate in prophetic function on social media and wherever else the Lord opens doors. Listen, if you're looking for a prophetic ministry in your church, we can help you with that. We can train, we can assist, we can help and mentor. We can also come and speak the word of the Lord over you and your ministry and into your people's hearing. We praise God for you. You can reach us at faithfireworldwide.com. May God bless you. May you go in his peace. Until next time, may the love of God, may you be in the love of God every moment of every day. God bless you. Thank you.